everyone. Welcome and thank you very much for coming for this important event. I'm simply the thanker and the MC here. I will turn it over to our new council member for position eight. So can you get says about the direction of the council? This is I think a lot of people have reported this is a huge ideological swing in the last year. You campaigned on public safety. This appears to be a swing with your appointment today. For, for public safety, yes. I think it's it's first and foremost on most people's minds. I knocked on several hundred thousands of doors, and that's the paramount question, the importance. How do we allow people to feel safe and be able to you know, walk to the grocery store without having to worry about their family members? And I think just having that basic uh, need needs to be fulfilled. So how do you do that with a potential budget deficit? Yes, yeah, so the setting priorities. The budget is a moral document and we really have to set priorities and without making sure that we really go down the line and have accountability and transparency going forward with the budget process. A couple of your opponents have said that they're planning to run in November um, and the campaign effectively starts now. Um, how are you going to balance the need to campaign uh, to keep the seat and um, actually governing? Yes, I I campaigned and ran a campaign before, so I think I have that experience. Um, this will not be a new process for me. We'll be able to integrate that into, into council work and doing that work at the same time um, and expanding that to the entire city. And so I have the knowledge, I have the experience, and I'm confident that I can do it going forward. Will the budget deficit be your first priority? Oh, I, I, I'm going to set up my office first, and then really we'll have the next couple of days to really focus on the issues coming forward. Um, but I believe while focusing on the budget, while focusing on the three main issues of homelessness, housing, public safety, all tied in, they're all connected. Councilmember Wu, how did you think the process went in terms of the selection? I know some people had some issues with it. Uh, Council President Nelson brought that up, but I just want to make sure I got your take on how the whole process went. Yes, I think um, for me, there was a lot of... It was just trying to focus on on what's next, next learning about the process, um, and as well as trying to rise above all the noise and really focus on the issues affecting us, which is you know public safety, homelessness, and housing, and really trying to bring everyone together and unite uh, despite all of the different um, groups that we're developing. Far too many uh, rideshare drivers have been killed. Uh, yes. What is your definition of safety when it comes to rideshare drivers in our city? Yes, I, I would love to meet with you and chat further on what we can do to help promote more safety. I've, we've been to too many vigils, too many funerals, unfortunately, and that has to stop and we have to make sure everybody is safe. Councilmember, when we talk, about, talk about public safety, you know, I mean, as someone who's from the Central District, born and raised, lots of family there in the South End, it seems that a lot of times the City Council and City Hall they look for solutions, but they exclude the actual victims. No one is talking to the victims of crime. So we got people in other districts here who are concerned about public safety, but we got people in, in the South End, as you know, in the Central District, who are the actual victims who are impacted by public safety. What is your commitment, you know what I'm saying, to really get out here? And yes, you got the whole city, but when you talk about public safety, what is your commitment to actually engage with victims of crime? the people most impacted, the people whose public safety is most hit, and the people who are the least listened to by this city council and city government year after year. I agree. And, and you know, that's one of my main, main things I'm trying to tackle is how do we help underserved communities, marginalized communities who have been historically ignored and forgotten? How do you go out and reach out to people and make sure that they're involved in the decision-making process? Um, and so I agree, we have to do better when it comes to survivor services. How do we help families? A lot of times when, when something has happened uh, after the investigation process, people are left to just try to figure it out. And so how do we make sure that we let them know there's resources, try to connect people to to what they may need to feel whole again. How do we start with the healing process, looking at the holistic issue versus just what happened? And so I agree with you. I think we, we, we need to do better and we should be doing better. Jonathan, and then two more questions. Uh, John, could you talk to, about, talk to me about the significance right now being an Asian American female, what this means to the community um, and, and just this moment historically, put it all in perspective for us. Yes, I remember growing up in 
the drill team and Auntie Cheryl, Cheryl Chow was on the council at that time and she took me to take your daughters to work day and being able to walk with her in, in City Hall and and then um, I remember that my entire life. And so we haven't seen an Asian female since uh, Cheryl Chow, Martha Cho, um, and the early 1990s, late 1990s. And so I hope to involve more youth of, um, in the communities to imagine like they can actually be here and actually take the seat in the future. Council Member, a quick follow up. Uh, there were several council members, three of them who didn't choose you as their top choice. How do you work through that now? How do you potentially you know, build those bridges there for the folks who didn't choose you first? It's all about communication and collaboration. And you know we're all in this together. We're all trying to save, uh, solve, or help make better all these same issues. And so we can find commonalities in help working together and trying to help. Council member, what, what gave you the confidence to, to apply to this position so quickly after you, know, you, you ran and lost? Um, and, and what do you say to the voters who had the opportunity to vote for you and, and chose your now colleague, Councilmember Morales? I think it's great that District 2 will have two representatives to serve that district. That district has been, you know, South Seattle, been marginalized and I believe underserved. It'd be great to get double coverage and to be able to work on these issues together. So I, I feel honored to be able to work with Councilmember Morales going forward. One last question. Just to confirm, are you definitely running to stay in the seat in November? Yes, I am running to stay in the seat in November. Thanks, everybody.